Good afternoon, everyone. And now we're going to do a little show and tell, a little bit of demos, a little bit of uh, Q&A, anything we've got. If you have a question, shout it out in the chat. And i um, going to go through and show you some of the stuff I've created, some of the areas where we're working on. Um, yeah, so here we go. Off we go. And let's move that out of the way so you can see the page. First thing I'm going to talk about is 3D shopping. So you're familiar with shopping websites. This, this one's just a sample of a shopping website. They deal with nutritious products. And if we go down here, you can see all their various products. If you click on one, you can uh, see the page. You can read about the item. And of course, you can add it to your cart. And you also have a cart up here. Oh, just for the demo, I'm going to take everything out of the cart. OK, and we're going to return to shop. And so we can find different products. We can click on them. Notice there's zero items in the cart and everything. OK, so now to do 3D shopping, what I did was I don't want to reinvent the wheel. You already have a website. You already have an online store. There's four million people out there are, you know, that have you know, different online stores, if not more than that. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make it simple, but yet use the experience you already have. So the purpose behind doing it the way I did it is that you have your online store we want the sales to happen at your online store and I just want to extend out your reach so that you're reaching into 3d land to get sales for your typical online store and how I did that is this first of all with uh, one step first first of all when you have a normal website you usually have something like www dot and then you have your dot com address and or you have it without the www but what I do for 3D websites is I use that same domain name, but then I use 3D dot instead of www. So basically you can have both, they can live side by side and they work together. So with everything starting out here, first thing you wanna do is I'm just gonna refresh the page so you see the same experience that a user would get going to your website. So they typed in your address. The first thing is we want them to give them some type of identity so that they walk around in the scene. Now, without logging on, you can actually select between male and female, and then there's a little bit of customization you can do. The next part is if you do log in, you can actually choose from 10 different avatars, including uh, five male, five female, um, one of them being what you're seeing here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a couple colors, and I'm just gonna customize it a little bit just so that we have some different look to it. And this is the same experience the users can do. You can hold the mouse button down and drag it to whatever color you'd like it to be. You can select it on a touch screen. Um, you can pick the joints or the surfaces and you can click it in the scene. You can click it, you know, down here on the list and you can select your colors. Once you finish doing your colors, next one, I'm going to pick a couple animations just because, oh, it's fun. First thing is if I go in here, Let's make it a happy walk. So now if I walk, see he's kind of da, 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 happy-go-lucky, yay. Okay, so that's, that's the happy walk. And the other thing is there's optional gestures which allow us to select different things. We can say, okay, I want to load up a simple wave. And if you notice, he disappears real quick. What it's doing is it's reloading the avatar with this, um, with this uh, animation in place. So then I'm going to select the second one. Let's go with um, over here. So he knows when we're over here and he can run. Uh, we can get other people's attention. Uh, as you can see, there's about 200 animations in here. So there's quite a few to choose from. Uh, if somebody counts them, they'll probably find out. Not all of them are in the optional gestures, but there are a bunch of them in between every one of the type of walk, run, backwards, forwards, turn, strife, you know, the whole bit. So, okay, third one, we got a victory gesture. And last one, let's have some fun. Down at the bottom, I put in some different uh, dances. So we're gonna go with the snake hip hop. Okay, and now that we have those in place, I'm gonna close the avatar settings, which leads right to loading the scene. I'm gonna close that out of the way for right now. And the next thing is, it loads up the 3D store. Now mind you, this is an extension of your two-dimensional store. So the products are gonna automatically populate on the store shelves. Now, 
just before I did this test today, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you, and like I said, this is a complete open, this is what I'm doing right now, and I'm basically gonna show you as it is. So there's one adjustment I need to make, and that is for some reason when you first walk in, it has one product on all the shelves instead of the random sample of everything. But if I go to categories over here, which let me get a little bit closer, I want you to know all, of course, is everything, but then these four categories that you see here are a direct extension of the categories in their shop that they created. So I'm actually reading them in from WooCommerce under, uh, under WordPress. So what I get is the exact same four categories. You can pick it by categories, and if you notice on our homepage, on this particular homepage, there's different category settings here. They show a few of them, but I'm going to go into shop and now that I've clicked all you can select just one of them and it will sort by just that category if there are more displays than what you're currently uh, the number of products that you have it will repaint them onto each one of them so let's say I had three products you're gonna see a three and then three and then three all the way around the room until everything's covered so that all product displays have something on them um, if it's more than what shows on the displays, I haven't quite added the thing to page through them and change what's next, but um, I'm working on a search page so you can be very specific of what you're looking for, and I'm also working on uh, being able to page through so you can show, you know, refresh and show the next pages of whatever the results are for what's on the thing. So now that we picked something, I want to show you what the display cases look like. And you should know in this particular case, they're two-sided. Um, there's when you're designing a building I actually give you three choices there's this version which is square and they're two-sided so that the buttons and pictures and notice the title on the top if you move your mouse over the picture it gives you the short uh, description that you put in WooCommerce and then if you highlight over the price tag then you can actually click on that and it becomes a window frame now the frame is actually showing the same page as the original website okay so you have this on here if I click on one of these and view it then basically this page is the same thing as the page for the same product obviously okay so you can click add to cart here and you can continue shopping you can even check out by clicking here it doesn't matter you're using your website just wrapped up from within mine from the 3d site so it basically extends like a mask it shows a new view of how to display and show off your products so you can also click on add to cart and when I click add to cart it not only opens the window again but notice one item in the cart and when I look on the page I'm viewing the cart page and I also have that product already in here and if that's all they want they can click proceed to checkout they can click on PayPal whatever they want to do the normal options from your website notice that if I come in here now it says one item it said zero before and so if I click on that I'm looking at the same cart here and the same cart here so it is the same session it is the exact same cart okay that means that my 3d website is not doing any of the transaction work I am not processing credit cards you are on your site your original way it also means when you submit and do an order, you'll see your order lists in the same place. I'm not touching any of that stuff. The only thing I'm doing is I'm displaying the product information on click. I'm displaying, I'm pulling certain information like the picture that you said is the feature image. I pull the title so that you see it in the display. I pull the short description so that when you highlight over one of the images, it turns to, a, uh, to the text. And then I pull the price the sales price that you're currently ha you have it for and I added read more and then of course when you click add to shopping cart I tell it to put it in the shopping cart and then it shows you your shopping cart and you work from there so all it is is a mask and a front end in 3d that is extending your current shopping cart so as you update your products there they're automatically updated here you do not have to do anything on your 3d site to maintain it once the site's built okay so that gets you past that part now people can buy the product and of course you can close that out and you can 
you basically have extended your 3D shopping cart or your shopping cart to work in 3D. Okay, now another thing that is in a lot of the stores is I add a link for shopping cart at all the registers. So somebody can click that and they can bring up a cart. So if they were browsing around and dropping things in the cart and all of a sudden they closed everything off, you don't have the picture anymore. You don't have the link back to the website. So I add 3D uh, shopping cart right there, view your shopping cart there. And if they go to head out the door and go someplace else, it's next to the door too. And you can click that and you can re be reminded, hey, check out, you had something in your cart. Do you want to purchase that? So a little bit of friendly stuff, a little bit of promotion, a little bit of helping them out, helping them find their sites. Okay, and when we start uh, dropping this into other scenes and when people come to visit, I forgot one little thing you can do here, and that is if I run over here, I can actually log on to the website with my character. I can come over here, I can stand behind the counter, I can go walk around my store, and as people come into the store, I can click on my little animation tab and, hey, how you doing? Good afternoon, welcome to my store. And I can make it, I'll, I'll be able to make it say things. Right now we're doing the animations, but we'll open up the microphones, we'll open up everything so you can actually get their, get their attention and do a little bit more. Okay, so then we have the snake hip hop dance. Is it gonna do it? Do we have a snake hip hop dance today? I don't know what that one is. Okay, here it is. No, oh, that's walking sideways. Okay, we, we don't have a snake hip hop today. <laughs> okay, no problem. We'll get to that later on. Like I said, it's in beta. We're working in progress. It's working on it, and we're getting there for a lot of the stuff. But you can work your store, and then even though you are in your store, if people go to your store, even if it's in another scene, when they walk up in front of your store and come through the doors, you will see them from every scene. So you could see 20 people in your store, and it could be five people in four different scenes. You'll get to see them all and interact with them and help them and everything else. You're going to be able to, when I'm done, you're going to be able to click on something and say, oh, this is what you're looking for, and you type in something, and you also, uh, it changes all the product displays for their screen, telling them, here, this is, this is what you're looking for, and they just have to walk up to the product displays and read about them and click on them and buy them. Uh, the other thing we can do is you can also click on somebody else in a chat and, and chat with them directly. And so when you, we'll demo that at a later time, but if you click on somebody through the door, it opens a text window on the top, uh, bottom left, and you'll be able to type things back and forth to that person. So you can ask them if they need any assistance, you can uh, ask them what they're looking for, and then you can help them point them in the right direction and change all the products. So we're gonna make this a working job for you. We're gonna make it where you can work your store in one place and be in many different scenes. Okay, so that's exciting, right? Next thing I want to show you is, okay, so let's get down to some basics. You get your store, and now you want to be able to maintain your store. You want to be able to change things up. Well, what I have is I have a full uh, 3D uh, CMS, which means content management system, for updating and changing your own websites. Now, to demo this, instead of pulling open a store already built and everything, I just want to show you how easy it is to work with some of these basics and actually create things. And you can create communities, buildings, or things. Remind you, communities are your 3D scenes. So that sets up the streets, the roads, the street signs, the trees outside, anything you want to do to decorate the scene. It could be the island, the water, the whatever it is. And then you have your buildings, which are going to be your 3D stores and also games and different things that people walk up on and can play when they go there or, or experience like the 3D store that we just saw. And then 3D things are different items that we can place inside of our 3D stores. So if I have a 3D thing that is a... A uh, table, for example, I can drop a table inside my store. I can put some chairs around it. I can have um, I can have a 3D object. So like you saw where those were the pictures of the items, I can actually build the item in 3D and then drop it in my store. And when people walk in, they see the item and can walk around it and interact with it. So the whole idea is to make it fully interactive and fully 3D. Okay, so I have my building. 
First thing I want to show you is that um, we can come in here to edit building and first level is these are different building blocks that we can add. So we have things like a wall, a floor, a box, a rounded box, cylinders, half pipe, cone, sphere, dome, triangles, and polygons, and all kinds of good fun stuff here that you can use. Um, I'm going to start with something simple. I'm going to go with a sphere. And notice as soon as I click the button, two things happen. First of all, in your scene, you see a sphere. Now, another thing I want to show you real quick is down on the bottom left here, we have quick editor settings. One of these such settings, I'll show you some of them at different times, but one of them in particular is avatar camera off is on right now and I'm going to click that button. Now what it does is it allows me to separate my camera walking around and looking at things from the avatar's perspective of the things you're looking at. So as I'm building things, it makes it really easy to move around, look at it from different angles, uh, jump in there and, you know, and view it from all different sides, adjust it, move it, whatever you have to do. We also have these guidelines on the object. Um, another item down here is you can turn off and on the guidelines as you're working with it. That way if they're in the way of seeing something, let's say it's a small object, you can turn them off, adjust it, turn them on when you want to line things, and you can kind of adjust it as you go. Okay, um, also this is a demo day, so as I'm doing this, if you have anything you want to say, chat it up, uh, type it in there, and I'll, I'll be watching closely on that today and answering your questions as we go. Uh, also, just so you know, Mondays, this today right now, we're doing a demo and a Q&A. If you want to watch me actually code and, uh, and build the product, we're building 3D open source internet, so anybody can host a part of the 3D internet. So if you want to watch me code it and get the product ready and be ready for release, then uh, make sure you click follow so that uh, you can always um, know when I'm online and coding because I code at all hours of day and night and I'm always jumping on and offline and showing you where I'm at at the time. Um, so, okay, so continuing on. Okay, so next we have this object in the screen. We place a sphere there. Notice the first thing I can do is I can hold down left, right, you know, I can make it move in all three dimensions uh, anywhere that I want to put this sphere. I can also up or down and place it wherever I want it to be. Um, I can also size it in three dimensions. Now, of course, if I show you a dimension that I'm not looking down, it's easier to see that it moved. So let's go this way. And I can also, let's go narrower, taller. See, we have full control over the size of the object we're working with. The next thing is, let me go taller just so you can kind of really see what I'm doing here. Notice it can go down into the ground, no problem there. Uh, we can also raise it up if we want to. The next part is rotation. You have three axes of rotation, axes of rotation to be proper. And of course you can turn it and go. Okay, and I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit higher because I kinda wanna show you. The first thing is covering type. Now, for those of you that have programmed and worked with meshes and stuff, when I call these molds, the reason is because I'm wrapping it in a bunch of different information based on 3D browsing. So I take the mesh and I wrap it with additional data so that I can still determine between the mesh, which is the raw object that you're seeing on the screen, just like the gaming engine replies to, but then the mold is all the details of what it's going to include, when it's going to include it, when it's going to show it on a screen, when it's not, um, how it's going to pass the information back and forth, preloading objects before they actually need to be loaded, unloading things that are no longer in your range of walking, which we're going to get to shortly, but also all this information is the mold. Well then on top of the mold, when you work with meshes and you do programming, a mesh is basically an object. So a a sphere in this case, a box, a rectangle, whatever it is, it's a three-dimensional object. Okay, and can be two-dimensional, it can be, well, can be two-dimensional or one-dimensional. It can be a line, it can be a plane, and it can also be a dot on the screen, so one pixel. So, okay, back to where I was going. So when you work with these objects, what they do is you can put materials onto the object. So right now it has a material that is a color and I can set that various color and in this case what I call 
a covering is not just the cover, just not just the material, but it's all the properties I've added to it above and beyond that. So if I've told it to cast a shadow or not, if I've told it to have a reflection in water, if I've told it to, um, there's a number of things I've told it to do. If I've applied an animation, that may be part of the coloring. Uh, there's procedural textures, so like if it's a water surface or a fire surface. So there's different things that I've wrapped all up into, and I call it coverings because it's a step above and beyond the normal materials. It's a bunch of different other settings that they allow you to do in the code. So, first things first, there's three different color settings. And notice that when I set this color, for example red, it's the top half of this egg sphere. And that is the luminescent color, the color that's actually coming, you know, uh, on the part that's being hit by the sun or lighting. Now, the second one is the dot on the sphere. So notice how when I told it to be yellow, that dot on the sphere, that's the sunspot. That's the direction that your light source, for example, the sun, is hitting the object you're working with. And this tells it which color to be. So I can make that any color I want. See how I can just adjust it to, I can go all the way around this outside area and pick the color I want it to be. And then I can pick the darkness or shadowing of it to be from perfectly white in the top left corner, perfectly black in the bottom right corner, which pretty much gets rid of it, or a shadow, a shade of the top right or the bottom left. You can pick whatever grayscale color you want it to be. But you get to pick which color by going around the outer circle and then and all i'm doing is holding down the mouse it also works with works with touch screen okay so that's the sunspot and if you haven't guessed notice the bottom of the sphere hasn't really changed this is the core color of the actual sphere which notice even the top half does get influenced by this so if i make this for example i'm going to pick blue just because you can see when blue and red mix we're seeing the top half with this being a true strong color. And we can back it off or make it whatever shade that we want it to be. Okay, so we're actually blending three different colors, three different ways to create any one color on an object. Now the next thing is, beyond doing just coloring objects, we have some other options. For example, I can come in here instead of color, I can say I want a texture on this. Well, the first thing it did, if we look really closely, notice there is an applied texture. Um, I start with a simple one, but it's also a mix of the texture, which in this case happens to be a white image, and the color that you pick. So the two blend together to actually set what you're doing. So we are still using colors even when you set a texture. Now if you want it to be just the raw texture, all you have to do is move all the colors to the top left corner, they become pure white, now the full texture will show through. When I click on Change Texture, I'm opening up my media library. I can look from here, I can look on building images and it'll show me any image that I've already used in this building. I can click on my images and it'll be anything that I've uploaded to add. And these can be textures, they can be pictures of something, whatever you want them to be. And you can upload the image and then it'll show up on this list and then you click on it to add it or I've included a bunch of stock images just so that you have something to work with when you first start. Um, in this case, I'm going to pick something simple. Um, let's see. I want to be able to show some color through it, so I'm going to pick this. Now notice, if I come over here and set these, notice I am still applying the different colors that I choose. Because over here on the left, you see that the image itself is more of a tan, so it is still fully applying whatever colors I set on the left, including this sunspot here, right there. Okay, so it is a blend. Notice all the lines and the texture from the actual object. Um, without doing it right now, I want you to know that I can also add what we call a bump texture. Uh, bump textures are used to match the pattern of the texture you're using, but at the same time, they, um, they help set different lighting patterns of the way it hits so that it brings additional life to it. And in fact, you know what? I'm gonna fly without a net. Remember, this is a beta test. So we're gonna try one of those just to see how, if it works or not for today. And I'm going to choose this texture, which notice how it looks. Okay, that's interesting enough. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say, let's add the bump texture to it. 
and under that same texture there was this one but then I have this image which looks kind of purple and black and that image now look what it's actually done to the process look what the eggshell the egg or whatever we're creating here looks like notice as I move around notice how it has little white um, glitter on the edges it catches some light the blacks are more depth to them the edges here of the color areas actually look like they stand out this is a way that we can create things that actually have a depth to them just by using two images so notice that's this base image and this image added to it and then now in this case we've applied color to it now if I wanted to show more of the original color I just go to the top left for the for the white or I can pick whatever shadow or color I want it to be but notice it still takes on the bump map which is this guy the purple and black and that helps with the highlighting so we get this little edges um, helps with shadowing and it casts the shadows to make each part of it stand out and look like it's in 3d later on I'll show you a cobblestone street that I use this technique on okay but did you notice how easy it was to create that I said I need a sphere I'm gonna size it this way I'm gonna put it this place and now I change the coloring to texture and I just clicked a couple things and it's ready to go so that's as easy as it is to actually create objects for 3d browsing and I can save that sphere now another thing I can do is I'm going to show you on a cube object because there's a couple things I want to show you with doing this so I'm gonna build a box I'm going to oh let's make it a little bit bigger just to do it okay and we're gonna make it a little bit taller and I'm gonna lower it just a touch now I'm going to put a texture on this box there's two different types of textures I'm gonna start with texture just like we did the egg to begin with and in this case I'm gonna change the texture and I'm gonna pick something that is directional for example bricks if I put bricks on the page what's gonna happen is there's bricks the pattern of the brick goes this way so you come in here and you say okay here's a block wall for example well notice what just happened the side on the right looks correct that's my block wall but then this side in front of me is actually vertical instead of horizontal so what I did was I created a second version of that called directional texture where now when you click that one it picks up and says okay all around the sides I need it to be a certain certain texture I need it to stay horizontal and on the top and bottom I need those ends to match so if I took this right now and I rotate it downwards so you can see the top of it okay so the top of it is facing towards the egg let's say it points to the egg this way if I walk around it or even just we're gonna shoot through it real quick go to this side of it and rotate back around notice the bottom side is also facing the eggs so those two sides match and then the four other sides are all running horizontal now just to do it I'm going to let me back that back down just so we're kind of looking at the different sides notice another thing that happened with my image when we look at this horizontally notice that the edges do not match up this one has it right here this one is right here the bricks don't look complete they don't look in place well what I've done is I've added additional uh, show advanced options section you open that up and now you can come in here and the section it has that I'm looking for there it is mold texture adjustment you can change the dynamics length and width and you can also change the height and width offsets so if I come in here and bump this a little bit notice it's starting to move the pattern well in this case it's up and down okay uh, the other one the other way is you can move this and it'll rotate it right and left so I may want it to be where the fold is right in the center or something um, the other one that you can do is okay first of all just so you know zero defaults to one and a one-to-one -one is by default what you get when you create a box okay so when I I can shrink it and now I'm getting it more that direction I can also shrink the with this way and notice how at some point in time 
these two cross each other. And now look, when I'm right there, for example, uh, let's go a little bit more, I'm almost there. If you notice near the bottom, you're actually getting closer. Uh, well, you can adjust it and you can find where they look like they're lining up. Um, another thing to do is if your dimensions are the same, then they come up perfect. So for example, if I have a 10 by 10 box, 10 by 10 by 20, so it's all dim dimensionally uh, straight. And then I come in here and I set the pattern to one and one and offset is zero. Offset zero. Okay, beta testing, but actually it's off by a half. Okay, I'll work on that. <laughs> actually, that's the 20 part. Let's go back to it just to show you that it does have some rhyme or reason to the dimensions. Okay, and we should have had something close. Okay, but you'll notice they're all going horizontally all the way around as it goes. And it does give some type of rhyme or reason to the way it does it. And you can size, so if you wanted it to be... Um, if you wanted it to be half the number of bricks, or there we go, now it bounced into place. Two by two, for example, for the size that we're using. Uh, it has to do with the original size image. It has to do with the painting on the sides. And notice that all the bricks line up. Now it looks like continuous real bricks that go all the way around corners. So it had to do with making these the same size and you know a couple different dimension things. Okay, so. And you can change the offset so that, for example, let's say when you first put it on there, you got like a half a brick on the top. You can actually adjust it. Oops, wrong adjustment. And you can set it so that everything runs right where you want it to, right on the edges. You have those fine tuning abilities. This comes in really handy. Let's say I was building a room and on the ceiling, I have ceiling tiles. But let's say there's two pieces of tile that I put next to each other. I can actually line up the uh, the lines in the actual tile so that they come out perfect where the seams are. So there's some stuff like that you can do fine tuning and adjusting. I'll get into merge shapes on a later date. Um, they're kind of cool. I can create an object and actually cut it out of another object or combine them into one. Uh, so just a couple different things you can do with this. So that's a little bit of tutorial on that. Now there's one more part before I move on that I'm going to show you and it has to do with both of these. I'm going to first see how I've got him here. I'm going to go back into the avatar. Now I'm working from the avatar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to create an action zone. Oh, okay. We'll come back to doing a couple other things we can build afterwards. But, um, or do I want to do that first? Okay, two things. I've got two places here I need to show you. Um, let me release him there's, there's two more parts I want to show you before I do this, this last piece because it's kind of really cool. Okay, so I'll end on, end on a high note here with this little scene I'm doing. Okay, first of all, we have web objects. And there's a whole bunch of things you can do here, including add a video screen so it plays a video like a TV. You can add an image into the page. You can even make it with highlights going over them. You can add smoke just by clicking on it. Now you got something that smokes. Um, you can add a flag, a tree. There's different objects in here that we've created. Um, there's also Babylon file. This is the extension I needed to show you. You can create things with full-on Babylon files. First thing you do is you select the 3D object you're working with. It's going to take you to your media, excuse me, to your media library. And in that media library, you can upload a Babylon file and all the associated files that go with it. Then you can also turn on animations. And what I'm going to show you is, let's see, um, I'm going to pick, uh, there's one, let me see, where's, okay, we're going to go with Cat Mac this time. And I'm going to select that. And now he draws a little cat. And he's facing the other direction. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate him. Oh, let's rotate him 180 degrees so he's facing us. Okay, and oh, I can always adjust that a little bit less, a little bit more. I'm going to make him where he's over here this way. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make him bigger. I'm going to make this one big cat. We're going to go five by in all three directions. 
So now I've scaled them onto the page. Now we have a great big cat on the screen. I'm going to lower him so he's standing on the ground. And I think it's 0.5. The bottom piece of is a full one unit thick. Oh, just so you know, the conversion of units, one unit in here is technically about six inches, so a half of a foot. So if I want it to be one foot, I just double whatever number I see here. So if I'm doing a 10 by 10, I'm doing a five foot square, okay? That gives you a little bit of reference of how to build things, what size the avatars are, if a six foot, foot person's gonna be able to walk through your door. You know, it gives you a little bit of thing. I try to keep it nice and rounded. Later on, I'll add it where you can select it to metric and you can select it to standard, uh, you know, for all of us USA people that couldn't understand how to do metric. <laughs> Okay, so I've added this cat on the scene. Now, one of the things that the cat has, and I'm going to, let me go back in here one more time, is notice under that cat, I've uploaded all the various files, and you can include your manifest file. I put a copy of my Blender files just because I want to be able to pull them back up later on, make changes and stuff. So I kind of like leave, leaving them all in one place. And then I have various images that go with it. The other part that I've done is I have up, um an animation attached to it. From here, I can create a name for an animation, call it anything I want, and the reason for doing that is I can actually call it from other JavaScript code and run this animation on this object. So you can name them so that you can call them and use them in your code too. The other part is the JavaScript event. Now in here, currently I'm doing on load. You can do on load, you can do on click, you can do on toggle so that if you click it once it does one thing, if you click it a second time it does something else. You can also do on mouse over and mouse out. And then notice I also have a bunch of avatar movement commands. Um, so you can set it to be your idle position when it's not moving. Um, you can set it to be your walk, your walk backwards. Everything that I have set up as an avatar, you can tie into these to be those commands. So if I move forward, it's going to move forward. You know, it's, we're working on that. It's getting there. But notice you can tie it to the events now, and then they're tied up to the events of the user when they work. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm using on load because it's not, it's not an avatar. I'm using the section for just straight animations. If you have a mesh name, this is the object that you had in Blender. And notice, I'm going to show you in Blender. So it, I have Blender, I have this cat, and um, just, to, just to show you, I have this cat. I added, um, I downloaded him, so thank you for the cat from, I'll post some websites later on of where you can get some free and uh, royalty-free items and also pay for enhanced items as you like it. There's a really cool site. I'll have to look it up, but I'll, I'll make sure it gets posted so everybody can see it. Uh, the other, okay, so I've added some bones in here. Notice I've added the bones, and then I animated this cat. So he basically can move around, and, and he does a little bit of, uh, you know, cat-like movements. And in the armature, each part is a different name. So, for example, Spine 1. If I wanted to move an, an animation on just that object, I can actually come in here, name the object, and then tell it to apply that animation. Now the start frame, end frame, when you export as a Babylon file from Blender, it will put them all into one serial animation. So you'll need to look in that file and it tells you which object you're doing. So if it's a particular animation that you want to run and it includes multiple bones, you can pick that. If it has a certain bone you want to move or object that you're moving, uh, you can pick those by name and put in the mesh. In my case, I don't need to say it. I just need to do the start frame and end frame of that whole, because it's more than one bone, for that whole set that I want to move, I need it to go from 1 to 480. And notice that is from 1 to 480 is my frame set um, on this animation. If I'm bringing it up a little higher, you can see. Notice it is 480 all the way over, and that's my complete cycle that I'm running for the frame. And notice, if I click play, he'll sit here and do this in the screen. Um, you know, it's to the best of my animation ability, so of course, people that are better at animating are gonna make them do what they want them to do. This is the speed that is natural that I set it up to work and everything else. Okay, so 
That's the animation, that's the number of frames, and the export file, like I said, does all that stuff. You can tell it if you want it to loop so that it doesn't stop after doing it once. And then I also have some advanced options, and you can set the original speed. You, uh, one is the original speed ratio. You can set it faster, slower, whatever you want it to do. You can also tell it if, you, if it's not looping, you can tell it when it ends to do a different uh, JavaScript, a different animation, or a different script. Um, and there's also parameters on that. The other thing is you can also select a sound. So when this runs, I can have the cat purring, for example. All I have to do is click select sound, and I can also tell it how far you can hear the, dis the sound from that distance. Get into that later on, but for now, I'm just going to say cancel. I don't want to change anything on this. I just want to use this animation in the scene. So I'm just going to close my media library back off. I have him in there, and now when I save this, Okay, and it's, like I said, it's beta. I'm not done coding this section, so you actually have to reload the scene, which I'm just going to do a refresh on the page. When I'm done, you won't have to. It'll automatically kick off the animation as soon as you click the button. Um, it's just, it's in progress. Okay, so now, notice, my cat over here is animated. He's walking around, he's moving his head and doing the different things. Okay. So, I've animated a cat on the scene. And it came directly from Blender. So it's that easy to add objects into 3D browsing. Okay, so we've got an animated cat. Um, another thing I can do, and this is kind of cool, I can pick an object. I'm going to go back to that original egg. Oh, and just so you know, all I'm doing is right-clicking on the mouse, and it selects that object and opens up all the properties for it. Uh, another thing I'm doing is if I move the rollerball, um, the scroll wheel on my mouse, it makes the guy walk backwards and forwards. If I hold down the left mouse button and I move the mouse, it will turn the direction you're going. You can look up and down. You can look uh, left and right. Now also, you can use keyboards. So you can use the arrows on your keyboard to turn left, turn right, go forward, go backwards. You can hold down shift and he'll run. You can, um, you can use the WASD keys to do everything running around that direction for all the gamers out there that, you know, I want to make it as comfortable and as easy going as you can on that. I added, if you click hold down R, you can look up. And if you hold down F, which happens to just be right next to the other keys, you can look up and down. Uh, a and D will strafe, so you can do your strafe walking or strafe running. And also Q and E will rotate. So within a very short distance of using those WASD keys, there's some other couple connecting keys. Um, later on we'll throw in where you can jump with the spacebar and stuff. I've already got it on the plans, it's in my notes. Uh, so very cool, You'll, you will get all the full commands of your avatar. Okay, so now that I'm editing this, one of the advanced options that we have is I can assign I can assign a sound to that image. So everybody, let's put on our let's put on our sound. Let's let me turn on my desktop sound here. Make sure you can hear it, because of course, what good is me telling you about sound if you can't hear it? Okay, sound is turned on. Now what happens is I can come over here and I can say, okay, attach sound. First, I want to decide. Do I want it to be linear or exponential of when you hear it? So I'm going to go with linear to start. And it's also going to loop the sound so it will repeat. I can set the maximum distance that I can hear it from that particular object. So if you, got, if you have a concert that you're designing and you have musicians playing on the stage and you want to blast out their music, well then by all means set that thing to you know a thousand and you'll be able to hear it for quite a distance away. If you want to work where you're, you know, you walk inside the store and you hear something, set it about 100 or 200. Okay, so that's a couple different designs. Right now I have it set for 100. I'm going to select a sound. And once again, it shows me my media library. And I can come in here and I'm going to click on violins. And the first thing, we hear violins. And when I walk closer, and I walked right into the egg. <laughs> And there we are, we can hear the sound. Notice that there is a, um, on the site, there is a mute, so you can turn off and on sounds at a touch. The other part is, as I walk backwards, it is getting quieter. 
until I get to about 100 away and it disappears. The other thing is this is stereo sound, which means when I'm walked over here and I rotate, it's now playing in my left ear because it's on the left side of me. And if I rotate the other way, it's now in my right ear and I can hear it in my right ear. So it's designed to be three-dimensional sound from wherever you place it. Now, isn't that cool that all you have to do is attach it to any one object in a screen? You just have to say, I want this object to be playing music. Now, can you picture, I can have a ceiling fan that as you walk up on it, you can hear the ceiling fan. I can have it be windy on the tree and have uh, the leaves play a sound whenever they blow in the wind. And yet you only hear it when you're close enough to that tree. So this is all three-dimensional sound that you can add at just the click and selecting the file that you want it to use. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Let's get those thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so going on from there, let's see where else I'm going to show you. Okay, um, to give you a little idea about that, let me take you through another scene. This particular scene, uh, I want to show off a little bit that we can do with the sky. This is kind of cool. So f right now, the sky so far is set up to be dynamic. It's set up to be um, it's set up to be adjustable for the person who wants to create the scene and the mood of their scene. Now, one thing that we can also have as a future option. It's not there yet, but the future option would be if I'm looking at a scene. I can actually make it be real time and maybe two choices. Real time so that it's the time of where my store is and you would see day or night based on my time as a host or we can set up the scene where it does the user's time so if it's daytime for them it's daytime in the scene for them. If it's nighttime it's nighttime and we can actually make the sun move across the sky and go around the planet. So got some really cool stuff that we can do we'll play around with those and we'll go from there but what I want to show you right now is when you're working in a community so you're setting your scene I've created different hills here I have a water I have you know I have a cobblestone street and by the way that does use the bump map that I was talking about before so you can kind of see it a little bit where it kind of shimmers and changes depending on where the lights hitting it we have shadows notice these chains and in the sand there's actually shadows of of the sand in the sand Okay, so the scene has all the functions and features that you'd want. Okay, so then we have edit the community. And one of the options that we can do is edit landscape and scene. In here, the first one, sky settings. And when I select the sky settings, first it'll load up your current sky settings. Now, right off the top, I can say day scene, which this particular one is, or I can say sunrise scene. And what will happen is the sun moves down and now you have a scene with the sun just above the water right at sunrise. We can also do sunset and the sun takes off. Notice in this direction it's dark. It's because we were facing rises in the east, sets in the west. And there it is in the other direction. We have the sun. You can just see it over the hill over there, right there. And the other thing I can do is I can click night scene. And what I did for the night scene, just so you know, is I've adjusted this where it actually takes on the, um, it uses the sun and then sets all the settings around it to be dark. So I turned the sun into the actual moonlight <laughs> for the scene. So eh, we'll play around with that. But for now, notice it looks like a, a full moon blowing in the sky. Pretty cool, huh? We've got, we have full scenes. Okay, so next, after that, the other thing that's really cool, I'm going to go back to my sunrise, just so that I have something working over here. I'm going to rotate around where you can see it, and notice it's still working its way over there. I animated it, so it, it takes its dear sweet time getting back to where it needs to be, because nobody wants to see a sun move too fast. Oh, except maybe mom. <laughs> Okay, bad joke, bad joke, ha ha ha. Okay, there's advanced options. So if I extend the section that says show advanced options in my menu on the left when I'm editing the sky, it starts with a whole bunch of settings based on how you want to paint that sky. Everything from the solar inclination, which is the position the sun is to the sunset, the sunrise. The sky luminescence is the brightness of the sky overall based on that sun. 
um, the azimuth uh, horizontal angle of the sun position so you can actually move it to more of the side or more above you. Um, we have all these different settings the, for the sky appearance. This one has actually changes the appearance with the colors in the sky. This one, the haze, and then there's some things about the scattering of the haze and the coefficient. So you can actually make it as grainy as you want or not. Um, there's all kinds of fun settings there. You can play around with them and get the sky to look exactly as you want. I'm going to show you that if I change the inclination, for example, look how as I click on it, it moves it to different positions. And I can make it at whatever I like, including where there's even a little glossy coming across the water there. So let you set your sky the way you want it to be. And when you're all done, all you have to do is say save sky. Now that's part of your scene. Other things you can do is you can set the water depth. You can also set the ground settings. Ground settings are your extended ground, so that's the ground I show off in the distance, and in this case, at the bottom of the water. I have water depth. If you set a scene, it's loading. Okay, if you set a scene to zero water depth, there will not be any water generated for that scene. That doesn't mean you can't add water to a pond or something else because we do have planes that have water surfaces and stuff so you can actually set them in different places just to have a you know a fountain of water or whatever you're trying to make so there's different ways to do that um, but this is the overall like if I'm building an island then I set the water depth around the island and that's what I'm working with okay so then I would have my land formation coming from underneath that water depth to up above the water level just so you have it coming up and down and if you actually want to see that um, let me give you just a quick run over this direction I'm gonna go through my little gate here and if I turn and run forward okay and as I go into the water notice how there's little pieces that are sticking up above the water and as we go down here you're gonna to start to see, like you can barely see it, but there you can because of the light, there it is. You can see a better one that's not showing. You can see how his pant legs are down there, but also you can see this part that goes around the land formation. That's as deep as I set the water here. And if I change that like less, notice I'm actually actually I'm going deeper. Notice he's getting deeper in the water. And as I go up it's not as friendly for going upward I have to actually walk or he he's moving slowly upward as it goes because it detects that he ran into the ground that I just moved out from underneath him <laughs> so that's how you set the depth of the water though okay and cancel that I'm gonna leave it where it is and then you can also set the gravity so if I'm building a scene that looks like Mars I can set the gravity to a fraction of that which it is on earth and you're gonna get those effects when you jump or with the physics engine for like when you're driving on it and it'll take on the effects for anything that uses gravity so it, it will be your use gravity setting for your scene in this case I defaulted to 9.8 which is Earth's gravity okay and let's go this way okay so now oops and notice we even have a water sound in the scene so the browser actually picked up and had a mute button also I added one to my browser but of course theirs is gonna override use it at the browser level but mine works in all of them also okay so now the last one is you can add new ground train which would be adding objects like these hills out here Okay. So you can add objects, and you can even do multiple textures on that. We'll do a separate session on that because it's a very unique scene type of thing. The next thing I want to show you, and I'm going to move right on into this, is what makes, uh, what makes 3D Internet 3D Internet. So I'm going to move to a simple scene here, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about action zones. In this particular case, what I have is I've created three different boxes. And what I've done is the boxes actually work at different levels. When you create a building, for example, I by default give you three different what we call load zones. And this is a demo just to show you about where those load zones happen. Now, the first one, the blue box, is going to be my extreme load zone. That's, gonna, that's an object that's set to load in that particular load zone. In fact, if I right click it, what I have is under show advanced, I have extreme load zone for shape visibility distance. OK, 
okay. So that's what I'm going to see when I'm the farthest away to go, oh, there's something over there. I need to walk over there and see what it is. And it can be as many meshes and objects and molds as you want it to be. It can be as many items as you need it to be. It could be one blender object. It can be 200 shapes. Whatever it is, that's you just set it to the extreme zone for each one of them, and they'll show up when this happens. For now, I just simplified it by showing you just one, just so we can see them in action. Okay, the next box, number two here, and looking under the, oops, scroll too far. Okay, we have high load, load when far. So this would be, for example, the outside of the building and also maybe the window, uh, some window shopping type items or something. But this is the stuff you're gonna see when you're getting closer. And it's gonna be more detail for the outside of the building. That's technically what it was designed for. And finally, the last one, this is gonna be the items that are inside your building. Now, you should know, you can create custom load zones. So like if I go down this hallway, now these items show. Or if I walk in this room, then these items show. And they don't show until I go in that area. They can be just outside the door of a room. So when you walk outside that door, before you go through the door, it loads up everything that's in that room. All of a sudden you walk in, everything's already loaded. So there's some, there's some techniques I'll show you and there's some real cool tricks of the trade that I'll get you through. But for now, I just want you to know that this is the core that makes 3D browsing possible. And with my quick, what is it, uh, Doc Emmett Brown impression, let's see if I can do this. Um, let me think, what am I going to say? This sucker's electrical, but it takes a 1.21 gigawatts of electricity to 3D browse. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, back to reality here. <laughs> Wife's laughing at me. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> okay, so I'll practice that one. I'll come back another time and see if I can do it even funnier. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, so what I have is three different items, three different load zones, and I'm going to just default off that box. Now notice when I walk backwards, first thing is right about, let's say, where's it gonna happen? And now well, let me reload the scene because I was editing it and changed it. I just wanna make sure it's gonna load and do everything we want it to here. I didn't change the load zone, but sometimes when I save it, it doesn't catch right. So, okay, so, okay, I'm walking backwards, and there it goes. So we lost the first one at this distance. Then, the next one is the high zone, and notice we are, and these can be adjusted too. Notice it disappears at that distance, so that's when we start to get more detail on our building. And finally, the extreme zone. I want this to be pretty far, and this is just gonna be the default, and as you build buildings, this is actually dynamic, so it actually grows as it needs to, but notice it just disappeared. So to demo this, on my bottom left in my quick editor settings, there's actually a zones on or off button, and if you turn them on, the first thing you're gonna see is there is a cube here. Notice we can't see the top of it because it's really, really, really tall. If I back up far enough, you would, you'd be able to see it, but this is that extreme zone box, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn back this way a little bit and I'm gonna walk inside of this box. When my avatar crosses that area, notice, well, there it is. Now it loaded, it went out on the internet, got the information it needed from this extreme zone, brought back and then displayed it on the scene. So. Now we're in that area and it shows. And notice if I walk back out of the box, it completely erases it from memory. So going back forward and we, got, we have that box and I'm gonna keep walking in this direction. And oh, another thing, notice I don't see another box in front of me for the load zone, even though we know there's two more load zones. The reason is when you click this zones button currently, it's designed to only show you the load zones that are loaded. Each load zone themselves can be triggered by a different load zone. So when I was in the outside the street extreme area, I wasn't loading these internal load zones that are when you're closer. I'm only loading the one object. I'm trying to minimize how much I load at any one time. So once I walked through it, it not only loaded the blue box and the ground, the foundation for the building, but it also loaded the next zone that I need to hit to load the additional objects. So now as I walk farther forward, notice I walk inside this one and there's our red. And finally, I can refresh that one more time and notice there's our 
close zone for when we're near the building. And I'm gonna walk up on this one. And as soon as I walk through it, now the white box opens. So that is load zones. Those are triggering, setting off, going out on the internet, grabbing information, bringing it back, and telling it to load that particular object when you're doing it. Okay, so by doing that, it distributes what we load at any one time. It makes it where we're not loading any more detail than we need until we get close enough to use it. Okay, so with that said, let me show you that in action on an object that I'm going to load up just a building. And this is from our homepage currently. Um, this is the demo of how these load zone worked. So at a distance, this we are already in the extreme load zone. Okay. And as I walk forward, notice I just triggered another load zone because more objects went. That's my default distance, you know, where I'm at a high distance. And as I'm walking even closer, I trigger when I want the doors and windows to appear on the building. Those are the three different load zones. Now, in this particular case, I may have broken it out into more load zones because if you have to load too much stuff at any one time, you could actually break the animation where it has to pause for a second and move. It has to balance out and do different things at different times. So if you stagger when it loads a certain amount of information, then it kind of breaks it down and does it over an area. Now to help you, I also do the same thing. When you tell it to load something, I put it in a queue and then I load it friendly so it doesn't load too many at any one time. So I'm doing a lot of that work for you, but you can also do that. For example, notice on these outside edges, there's a block of you know foundation, but there's nothing really on it. But yet, if I walk over here, now there's a railing. I've added additional load zones that were custom that only work if you're in that area of that edge. See, no, and another thing to notice, I'm gonna walk on this side. I know I'm going towards this side of the building, so those loaded, but if you'll notice, uh, actually, I did load both. I'm standing inside of one. <laughs> the dimensions of the thing caught the other one, and the other side is the other side is loading right here. You can see it. But there are times when you can have it where only one of them load, depending on where you're standing. Like only on this side, only this side loads, for example. Okay, so that shows you that. Now let me let me back off to where we first started in the scene again, and I'm going to do that same thing, but I'm going to show you the load zones so you can see them as we're doing it. First things first. Okay, we're going to turn on the load zones and notice we have the we have we're already in the extreme load zone. That's why something loaded. But I'm going, "Hey, what's that over there?" Now I walk in front of the high load zone and there's the next piece. And when it did that, it also loaded. Notice the new number of load zones. There's one down here that goes outside here. There's another one that's really tall. Those are my default ones. I tend to make them tall to make sure everything loads at some point in time. And then you can have certain ones that only work from certain areas. Um, I went with tall because if you fly over in an airplane, for example, or if the gravity's off and you want to go over it, it should load. So those, that's why I did that. And as I'm walking forward, I've, I have these other ones that extend off to the sides. So notice when I break this plane and I walk inside of this box now, you'll see the doors, the back area goes, and some plants show up in the front of the building. Now when I walk inside of this one, now the windows show up on the building that are shaded, and also the welcome sign shows up. And eventually, if I walk in front of one of these boxes, this is where it's triggering doing the railings on the side. Okay, so the other thing, notice, is here's a load zone. Well, it's not. It's here's an action zone. Notice it's in front of the doors. And let me trace it a little bit so you can see. There's this box right here. Now what this one is, instead of a load zone, it's still an action zone. They all cause action. They all trigger something to happen. But when I walk inside of this one, it's a different one. This one triggers the swinging open of the doors. And if I walk out of it, the doors close. So what I've done is I've created different ones that can do different things. So that one triggers the doors to move. Now when I come in here, 
Notice, if I look at the side doors, there's a box around them too. Those are the action zones that swing those doors open. And another little trivial thing, I put the action zone, I can size them any way I like, I made it where it's very shallow on the inside because I'm pushing the door open. So it doesn't really happen until I get really close to the door. And that's pretty much like I'm running into the door and just shoving it open as I go through. If I'm on the outside, notice that it extends quite a bit farther out. It's because the door has to swing all the way open before I cross that plane and get into it. So by setting them up properly that way, it works. The other thing I have in this room that I just want to point out is, notice we have a globe. And if you look closely, it's spinning. This pole is part of its action zone. Now, this particular one is a rotation area but I'm not triggering it by being in an area. It just rotates all the time whenever this is drawn. So the globe will always be rotating. I didn't have to turn it off and on. Yep, and it works in all browsers. And, um, okay, so notice the pole itself, the axis is spinning. And I told this globe, which is basically a sphere like we created in the last scene and with an image of a world on it. So then I told it to spin with that pole. And I could have grabbed more objects and told them to spin also. It can be as many objects as you want to be with any axis that you create. Um, another thing I want to point out while I'm here, this is a good little demo area, is okay while I'm in here, two things. One of them is I can have images that when you move your mouse over them, they highlight. You can also have these little, uh, like alt tag type things that just pop up, so you can say, click for 3D browsing information, okay? Also, follow Walk the Web on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. So we have the different buttons here. Notice they're even animated. They stick out a little bit farther as you click on them, or as you highlight them. And if you click on them, yes, you do, do bring open the links on the page. This is the interaction that allows you to be 3D browsing as part of browsing. Movie, so we extend out and, and show different in pages. In the movie is okay, we can also set if it shows up in an iframe or if it sets, sh uh, sets up as a different tab on your browser. Um, some pages like YouTube aren't designed to go inside of a tab, so I could create a web page that is and put my YouTube video on it or whatever. So there's ways to nest things, but, but there's different things that if you highlight over them or if you click them, we do have links. Okay, now to put it all together, there's one more thing I want to show you about this before I move on, and that is I'm going to show you Google Analytics on any one of these items. For example, oops, I don't want to select the building. I already have the building selected. I'm going to go into my options and settings and building information. I give you the option to set the building name and also a Google Analytics ID. So I've added this Google Analytics ID to this page. Now, I may have to change that later on just because other people just saw what that was, but eh, okay, we'll worry about that at that time. Or actually, I'll change it after I get done today, but I do want to demo this to you, so it's important that I show you what I have there. Okay, so you put your Google Analytics ID there, and then, and the reason I didn't bother hiding it is because when I show you this page, you're going to be able to see that ID anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I'll change it. Okay, now, when I bring open this web page, and I'm going to make it side by side so you can see what it's doing and I'm gonna load this from scratch so I'm loading being able to walk up and see this building and remember when I said we're starting in the extreme zone so it's loaded the extreme zone and notice I just got a hit and I'm out here in Riverside California at the moment and that's showing me as an active user and notice the page that it loaded is building-far.php. I'll make it friendlier on the paths, but that's that is saying which building it loaded, which community, and you know everything that it does. It shows the distance, it shows where it is, but it says it load building far. So then I'm going to show you where the zones are again, and I'm going to walk inside of this zone. And when it triggers, when I walk inside that, what's going to happen is it takes a second. There it is. And now we have, that's well, still showing building far, there it is, the new click, and it updated, and now when I show you, it says building hyphen near. So this is a way of you knowing 
If people saw your building from a distance, did you draw attention to it? Can you improve what it shows from a distance so that they are interested to look closer and see what it is? Um, then, did they walk closer and did it actually show the building load at the next level? So we can set up these different custom levels where each one can be showing us on our Google Analytics and we can tell how far or how much they saw before they walked away. That'll also give us statistics on how long they spent on the site, how long they were looking at our web page and stuff. We can do different things to help determine how their interaction went. Because notice, like if we were in a 3D store or something, if you walk inside there and I click on a product, I would see that you read the product uh, information about a certain product. I would see that you clicked and added it to your cart. Every one of those become your page views for your particular building. So very friendly, helps pass it in, helps track it, and you'll know exactly what you have. Okay, so, and don't bother worrying about that, I, that uh, <laughs> Google Analytics idea. I used that one specifically for this demo. I used it for this building, which isn't going to be on our homepage in another couple days. So, with that said, uh, now you have the Google Analytics. You can tell exactly what your website's doing. You can tell because of that and partnered with your Google Analytics shown on your um, online store, you'll be able to see everything that's going on. You'll be able to see if they came from here, if they're looking at it through 3D because you get the statistics there too. And now that we're, um, now that we've shown all that, I have one last thing I'm going to show you. And this kind of shows you how everything I've shown you today comes together. And I'm going to open up a scene. And this particular one has items we've brought in from Blender. We've added animation. I've added animation to the building. I've added animation to trees. I've, we have the water. We have the sound in the water. We have, um, we have a whole bunch of stuff. I put the webby character out front with its animation. Um, it's in a store. This kind of brings everything together so you can see exactly, you know, get a good example of something that it'd be in the future. Okay, so as we come up here, I'm gonna let it finish loading. What I would be doing normally, since this is the starting point, we have to wait for it to load each individual piece and, and get there. Um, I'm working on those speeds, so as we go, it'll be running faster and faster as I go. But in this particular case, um, we're loading up everything right where we're starting. If I started you just a fraction down the block, then what happens is you see my store and as you walk towards it, I can take that time to actually load it, but you're already interactive. So that's kind of a little bit of the principles behind doing it this way. Uh, the other thing that I haven't done yet that I plan to do is the building itself is all one and then some objects inside are another piece, but I can actually set it up where we can split what comes in from Blender and load different meshes from within the Blender object at different load zones. So technical, it's getting into the future. Don't worry about that just yet. But since we just talked about load zones, I wanted to mention that we are going to be able to break that up and load different pieces from different distances. So you can have it do exactly what you want it to at different times. Okay, with that said, what do we have here? Let me do a kind of a walk around the room. First of all, tree to the left. Notice that is bending in the wind. I have that a fully animated so that the branches are animated. They're moving a little bit separately than the trunk of the tree. Um, I'm going to spin around here real quick and take note that, okay, we have the sun at a certain position. Um, oh, while I'm looking to the left here, notice I do have a light turned on in the actual uh, light, uh, the street light. And when you're over here, notice that the bottom of the light, the panel of it, is actually casting a shadow on the ground. So you can actually put light sources in objects. I'm going to get right up underneath it here and then look upward a little bit so you can see it. And notice the bottom of the light and then what we have on the ground here. We've casted the shadow of that exact light source. And that's different than the sunlight source. So notice we can have multiple light sources and we can cast shadows from each one. Okay, we've set the sun to be coming up over in this direction. Um, notice off to the left there. If I look up a little bit, uh, there's our sun. Okay, we have that. We have 
the scene. Notice the awning. I want to point that out real quick. We have, I've animated each one of these little tabs so that they kind of move and blow in the breeze to help with making it look like reality out here. Okay, so we have the walk the web. And then we have Webby standing over here and he's welcoming us in, saying hi. And I can make him spin a sign or whatever we want to do. I have his nice little sign bubble talking over the top of his head. Um, but we can create anything that your imagination will let you do in Blender. You can export to here and animate. So don't judge it by my quality of what I can do. Judge it by your quality of what you know how to do or others can do. Okay, notice it opened the doors as I walk through, so it does have a load zone. When I walk inside, I have a moving ceiling fan. So we're spinning up on the top there. We can walk around. We can look at different products on the shelves. Notice I built some objects. Uh, one of the things is I built a 3D um, pair of glasses. I also built a set a smaller version of that on this actual project uh, piece here. This is one where you, it is interactive, so you can say read more, and it will pop open the page here. And it goes to my website and shows you that product right out of my store. Yes, three pairs for five dollars. Yay! Woo woo woo! You can get your 3D glasses. And notice once you get your 3D glasses, you come over here, you click on the little gear, and instead of 2D view, the first thing you can do is 3D glasses, and everything splits into 3D so that you can watch it in 3D and walk around and, and view it in 3D. So, poor boy's 3D glasses, and yeah, that's what I use. Okay, so you can also use it for, notice in here, we can also go to a VR headset and VR headset with gamepad. We'll add additional ones as we test them out, but uh, that's thank you to Babylon. They've already done that work for us. Uh, the other thing is, notice, this one did not have the picture and top. We just used the title, price, and the read more and add to cart. Over here, we have the read more and add to cart, but we also have this other section where it'll show you the short description. Uh, so we have a couple different types of displays. Note, remember that at the beginning of this demo, there was one that was very boxy. We had the box corners. This one was actually created using Blender, and then we added them into the scene. And notice you can click on read more, and the button works so fast that it actually popped up before you could see it, but it actually um, indented and animated the button as you click it. Okay, and here we are with our 3D glasses once again. People can click here and add them to their shopping cart, or you can go and you can click the Add to Cart button here, which will not only open the window, but it will also add it to the shopping cart. So we've cut out the middleman. We've actually shopped on our regular website using 3D to get there. Woot, 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 woot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just check and see how many people are awake. Yes, do I still have you with me? No. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I know it's afternoon. You already had your lunch. You're ready for a nice nap. And we're getting there soon. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I've built this place using Blender. It has a lot of options. You can you can walk around in here. You can uh, there's a back door. You can work the counters. You can you know there's a lot of stuff we can do once we get to the, this point. And finally, what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to try one last thing and see if he wants to play nice with us today or not. Whoops. I'm going to change the view to self camera just because I want to see the guy in the store. Look, he's in the store. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. I'm going to come over here and we're going to play an animation. And let's see, what ones do we have? Well, first of all, we're going to do the victory dance. So we hold down our mouse button on that and yes, yes, yes. We got the victory. Ah ha! Yes, it works. Ah ha 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 ha! Ho 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 ho! Okay, and then finally we have the uh, the snake dance. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah! Woo woo woo! Oh, the chicken dance. Okay, this one's the chicken dance. <laughs> He's happy because the whole demo worked and we did it. And you can also select your own animations just by clicking there. Remember where we were at the beginning of this demo. Okay, so what do you think, everyone? Thumbs up. Yay. In fact, okay. I want to thank you all for joining me today, for checking out the demo. Um, we'll have it back here for an instant replay so everybody can check it out and... I want to thank you all for coming, and um, 
enjoy the demo and like I said make sure you follow me so that you can catch me while I'm working in the regular days on coding this and we're going to release a whole version of this so everybody can become part of the 3D internet. Uh, have a great day and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again real soon.